The Wood Knight is sponsored by I Would Like. This video is sponsored by Sleeping Duck. Surprise, surprise, my ribs are still broken, so this week I don't have a new project for you. However, this is something I've been working on for a while, and that's the long edit of my uh, Shogun Queen platform bed that I made last year. And I released the short edit of that this year. I think it was about March, it was about 15 minutes long. The long edit is broken up into several parts. I think it's gonna be about four parts, uh, and the total length will be about 45 to 45 minutes to an hour long. Now this footage was all shot last year, uh, so there is quite a few differences. One, I have a beard in the footage. Two, how much has changed in the workshop since that video. Uh, so if it looks familiar, but a little bit different, particularly if you're new to the channel, uh, th there's good reason that that was all last year's footage. Next week, we will be returning to regular project videos uh, we just needed to take a bit of a break this week and take stock of a few things. I hope you enjoy and there will be a playlist on the side or links below for the entire series of this. It'll be about four parts. Uh, or if you haven't seen it already, there'll be a link for the short edit, which was about 15 minutes long. First, the leg segments were cut to length using a stop block on my crosscut sled. This was very important to have the correct length as once it's all glued up, I didn't have a great way to trim up the entire block. After all the segments were cut to length, I could rip them to width. I could have done this beforehand, but the length of the boards I was using made it easier to rip afterwards. Now before we can do any joinery, we do, do need to talk about what the face of the leg is going to be. By that I mean, is this going to be the primary outside face, the one that you might see at the end of the footboard, or will it be the laminations? In my case, we're going to go with this clear piece and the laminations are going to be on the side. Now, ideally when we're laminating, we're going to get light grain wood. And in this case, Tazi Oak is fairly uh, straight grain and doesn't have a lot of color variation in it. So it's fairly easy to match the grain of the wood. So that when it's all glued up, it's gonna look like it's a solid piece, a single solid piece. So getting back to the joinery, for me, it's gonna be two pieces like that glued together on each leg. <clears throat> then the next two pieces are gonna receive this notch here. Now that notch will allow this is just for demonstration, the rail of the footboard to sit, be, sit in like that and be glued in. <coughs> Once we've glued that, we need a way to attach the side rails. And for me, I'm gonna use these maxi lock brackets, which are, as far as I know, an Australian invention. So this is the piece that goes on the side rail. And this is the piece that'll go on the uh, footboard. So that'll go in like that. And it gets locked in with some high tensile strength uh, socket head screws, or set screws. So the reason for the notch is to give us somewhere nice and square to attach this rail between the two legs to create the footboard, as well as somewhere to then hide the side rail when it's attached so it looks like there's no seam and you can't see any of the brackets or joinery. The first cut for the pocket was done on the table saw with the blade as high as I could get it. This gave me a nice clean reference surface. The rip was cut at the bandsaw. Finally, a handsaw took care of the remaining section and a chisel cleaned it all up. Glue up was done in stages of two layers at a time. You might have noticed that I only had three of the leg lengths on the workbench before. 
That's because I was a bit of an idiot. I got a little bit too enthusiastic and I glued up this blank before remembering I needed to notch it out. So I suppose this is an alternative way to using the bandsaw to notch it out. Uh, I'm going to use the drill press to cut out that same notch. Um, this is going to take a bit more effort, but the drill press will leave me with a relatively, or the forced bit I should say, a relatively flat bottom there for gluing, and any of the waste I'll be able to chisel out fairly easily. At least 50% of woodworking is jig making, and this is not going to be any different. To cut these dual tapers is going to be tricky in the first place, but to cut them on all four faces is going to be even trickier again. So we could freehand this, but because this is not going to be square, well, it's not going to be the same height here as it is here, we're going to run into issues and potentially safety disasters. So to that end, uh, a jig is going to be needed to create a safe and repeatable environment for cutting the four faces on the four legs. So what I've come up with is basically a base sled. Now this edge here will run up against the bandsaw fence. The blank will get positioned like that and there'll be uh, fences or support blocks, whatever you want to call them, at either end. Those will be held in with two bolts and wing nuts, and that, then there will be four holes that will allow us to index uh, depending on which taper we're doing. So this taper here is a 6.7 degree taper, and the other one is a 5 degree taper, so we can't just use the same spots and flip the leg over. Um, so to that end, we need to start creating this. All I've got here is some scraps of plywood. Um, it doesn't need to be pretty. After this bed project, I don't think I'm going to be keeping this due. Um, and it's just a long piece of melamine. Again, this is just some scrap. I've got one clean edge. That's really all it needs, as that'll be riding up against the uh, bandsaw fence. It does need to be longer than the blank, so that when it's angled, you can still get the brackets on. Um, and these brackets, really, they need to be at least half height. But that's about it. Any excess can be trimmed off, either at the bandsaw while you're making the first cuts, and having an additional clamp to hold it all in position is probably going to be a good idea. There isn't really much to say here, all I did was follow the dimensions on my drawing and marked it out. Right, so we need a way to attach these fences as well as move them back. 
depending on which piece we're doing and which angle. So the easiest way to do that is going to be with some bolts. Two bolts per fence is going to lock it down so it won't swivel, whereas one bolt would be firm up until a point until it releases. So because these have um, heads in them we need to uh, countersink that and then drill all the way through uh, and match that up with these fences. So because I just chose random places or random scraps I should say for my fences I am going to measure in a random amount and drill there. So I'm going to go 30 mil in from either side and I'm going to drill a through hole in both of these for my uh, bolts and from that I'll use that to mark the malamine uh, for where the bolt location should go. The location of the fence doesn't matter so much as long as it's along that line. The only thing we need to be careful of is that it doesn't extend over this edge of the malamine as this edge here is going to go up against our bandsaw fence and we don't want to uh, get in the way of that. To make things easier when cutting the tapers, I cut relief cuts at the meeting points of the two tapers, just using a miter gauge to keep things straight. Then it was onto the taper cutting. The short tapers didn't take too long, but there were just so many cuts to make. All up, each leg took about half an hour of just cutting, let alone all the processing time to flip and adjust. Unfortunately I messed up one of the lines when marking and the tapers didn't meet perfectly. This meant a fair bit of cleanup, which wasn't particularly graceful. I used a combination of chisels, plain scrapers and sandpaper to get the shape. Once that was done, it was time to glue the footboard and headboard rails between the pairs of legs. <laughs> 